computer science. This is a uh, syllabus statement 1.3.3D and we are looking at QR code scan. You know, there are quite a lot of scanners in this uh, topic, aren't there? Um, the next video should be um, not scanners. <laughs> it's going to be uh, digital cameras, actually, um, followed by keyboards, mice, microphones, touch screens, um, a, few other a few other things, and then we move on to output devices. All right, so QR code scanners are pretty similar to what we looked at last time, barcode scanners. Um, a, it stands for quick response. Um, and a quick response code is made of a matrix of black squares on a white background, something like this. Now, if you go ahead and if you can find some um, an app or software that can scan this, you can scan it. It'll take you to a link. I'm not going to tell you what link it'll take you to. You're just going to have to find out yourself. So normal barcodes can hold up to 30 digits, but QR codes can hold up to 7,000 digits, giving a greater scope of storage. And QR codes can easily be scanned using an app on your smartphone or tablet. And sometimes companies advertise their content by displaying barcodes in public for people to scan. Now, this is, of course, another advantage, as you don't need a barcode scanner. Um, like, you don't have to carry a barcode scanner around with you to uh, scan stuff in public and uh, get to websites and stuff. But your phone can do it. Now, this is, of course, uh, quite a big advantage because most people carry phones with them in public. So um, as said, uh, an advantage of QR code is, um, well, it's not necessary for the user to type a URL as they only need to scan a QR code with an app. And they will be directed to, to the website. And secondly, QR codes can be displayed pretty much anywhere in public, really, that's suitable like trains, buses, magazines, business cards, and this gives an effective way of advertising. Computer Science, Syllabus Statement 1.3.3e, described the principles of operation of digital cameras and described how they are applied to real-life scenarios. Um, so digital cameras uh, are pr pretty, pretty easy because most people have them. Um, and it's, if you don't know what it is, uh, a digital camera is a camera which can produce digital images that can be stored in a computer. So it could look something like this, um, but also if you have a phone or tablet or computer, those are examples of digital cameras as well. Because back in the day, um, cameras used film, used film to record photos. So the photographer wasn't able to see what they have taken a picture of before it was developed. And this made their use quite expensive, as unwanted photos couldn't be deleted. So, like, if you took an embarrassing picture of yourself in the shower, uh, well, you just wasted some film. Because, but nowadays, um, digital cameras have taken over. People can not only delete their photos now, but they can also transfer their photos um, to their devices using a USB cable or Bluetooth. So a digital camera is controlled by a microprocessor, which can automatically focus on images, automatically operate the flash, adjust the shutter speed, adjust the aperture size, adjust the size of the image, and remove red eye. So you may notice these features um, on your phone. It's like digital cameras can um, do these things, which can pretty much, well, I mean, really help, because, uh, you know, back in the day, you couldn't really remove red eye that easily. So a photograph is captured when light passes through the lens onto a light sensitive cell. The cell is made of pixels. The number of pixels determines the file size used to store the image. Did we, did we actually go through files? Yeah, I think we did. Um, back when we were looking at uh, the third subtopic of topic one. Um, but by reducing the res resolution, the storage requirement is reduced. The quality of the photograph depends on factors such as the lighting and the type of lens used. 